everyone. Today's lesson is lesson 119, and it's finding a hole when a percent is known. Um, our learning target for today is to write and solve an equation to find a hole when a percent is known. There are a couple ways to solve these problems. Um, I think it's, it's best to get into the habit of solving these kind of like a linear equation, like pre-algebra style where you have a variable, so a letter, an unknown number, and you do steps to solve to get that variable by itself. So um, there are a couple prerequisites, I guess, if you will, to doing problems like this. Um, one of them is understanding when you see something like 30%, you understand in your brain how to write 30% as a decimal number. That's going to really serve you well in problems like this. So understanding that 30% is written like 0 0.3 um, in, in order to solve. Um, also doing problems where your divisor in a, in a division problem where your divisor is a decimal number. What steps do you need to take before you can do that type of work? But let's go ahead and look at some examples and do them together and um, we'll go from there. Let's take a look at this first example here. 30% of the fans in a football stadium are waving team banners. There are 150 football fans waving banners. How many football fans are in the stadium in all? I started handwriting this out and really, I think what I'm gonna do, first of all, encourage you to pause the video right here, give this a try on your own, see if you can find that total number of fans and unpause when you're ready to watch me solve. For solving this, I'm actually just going to scroll down to the next page. I think they did a really nice job uh, going word for word from your textbook on how to solve this. And this again is an example of how certain vocabulary in math means certain things. So um, let me break this down for you. The statement above tells us that 30% of the vans are waving banners and the number is 150. We will write an equation using T to stand for the total number of fans. So look at how they've broken this down and used that wording to create an equation. 30% remains 30% right here. Um, of in math means times. 30% of the fans, total fans, there's that T, are, the word are or is, that stands for equals, waving banners. Waving banners, we, we were told 150 were waving banners. Now we have an equation, um, the only step that they took right here is turning 30% into that decimal number. So 30% now becomes 0 0.3 or 3 tenths. So now we have 3 tenths times t, you don't even have to have that multiplication sign there. When you have your variable and your decimal next to each other, it, it, it implies that they're multiplied. Um, t equals 150. So in this case now, in order to get t by itself, this is where it's, it becomes a little bit like pre-algebra. In order to get t by itself, we need to divide by 3 tenths. Right now, T is multiplied by 3 tenths, and to get rid of it, we have to do the inverse operation by dividing by 3 tenths. When we divide by 3 tenths over here on this side of the equation, it eliminates itself, but whatever we do on this side of the equal sign, we must do on this side. So now we're going to end up with T by itself, but we need to take 150 divided by 3 tenths. That's what they've done right here. 150 divided by 3 tenths. Now this looks a little bit different. Now you might ask, like, where did that 1500 come from all, all of a sudden, when you divide and your divisor is a decimal number, you need to bump that decimal all the way to the end in order to do any of the math work. So we've taken this 0 0.3 or 3 tenths, we've bumped our decimal to the end, one bump, and if I have to do that on the outside to the divisor, I must do it on the inside to the dividend. So now I've moved my decimal to the end. On the outside here, the divisor now just becomes three, and my, my dividend in the inside becomes 1,500. Solving this problem is going to give me the exact same answer as it would if, if we weren't to bump any decimals. So now when we do that dividing, we find out that our answer is 500, 500 fans in total. So just to sum this up, um, their initial question, 30% of the fans are waving banners. Um, how many total fans? The answer would be 500 fans. That label is really, really important for those visual people like me. This is a diagram. This, um, this is just how you could break it down into different sections and notice um, well, 30%, I could break each of these into 10%. Three of those would represent 30%. Um, that's, 
that would be 150 fans. If I know that, I can plug in how much goes in each of these sections and I can find out a total number of fans. Let's take a look at this example. 30% of what number is 120? It's exactly like the one we just did, just using different numbers. Find the answer by writing and solving an equation. Let me just um, remind you, you can write an equation to solve this or you can use a diagram. Whatever works for you is the right way to solve. So go ahead and pause, give this a try, and unpause when you're ready to hear the answer. Again, I'm just gonna walk you through what was in the book because I think they did a really nice job breaking this down. So 30%, again, 30% of what number is 120? To translate this, look here. So 30%, they have 30% here. Of, of course in math means multiply, what number is represented in this case by letter N or variable N is, represents equals, and 120 dot drops down. The only step left to do here is turn your 30% into your decimal number. Um, so we have 3 tenths n equals 120. Same thing that we did before in the previous problem, we set this up like this. Um, in order to get n by itself, we need to get rid of this n times 3 tenths. In order to get rid of that, we have to divide by 3 tenths and that cancels out so that n's by itself. I must do it over here though. So now we have n equals 120 divided by 3 tenths, and that's what we're set up with right here. It looks a little bit different because they've shown how they've done the work of bumping the decimal to the end. So now I don't have 3 tenths in my divisor spot. They've bumped the decimal to the end. Now I have 3 out here, and we've bumped the decimal one time inside in this dividend place, and now we have 1,200. So we have 1,200 divided by 3, and that gives us a total of 400. So this one actually doesn't have a label. It's not like a story problem. The, the question was, what number is it? And so you don't have to have a label. The, the number is 400. If you want to set up a diagram, this is what your diagram would look like. And this is in your notes. I think there's one more example. Yep. Okay. Last one. 16 is 25% of what number? Solve with an equation or diagram. Go ahead and pause and unpause when you're ready to solve. Let's see if I can zoom a little bit here. Okay, so again, this is just like what we've practiced before. 16 drops down to the digits. 16 um, is, is equals 25% of means to multiply. What number is represented by the variable n? Um, 16 is 25% of n. Um, hmm, I would have done this just a tiny bit different. I think all they've done is flipped this around. It's just a viewing thing. They've just flipped this linear equation around so that the 25 times n is first and the 16 is second. So it doesn't matter. It's, it's not a big deal. So this is just a viewing thing. Now, um, They've chosen to use a fraction in this case. You, let me just double check. No, you don't need to use a fraction, they just did. Honestly, that wouldn't have been my brain's first choice. I would have done um, 25 hundredths or 0 0.25 because that's how I see 25% in my brain. Also, can you see how this is correct though? One fourth. 25% is represented by the fraction 1 fourth. That's kind of a common one that most of us just have memorized. So take a look here. Now we have 16 equals 25% of n. 16 equals, this is our 25% now, 1 fourth n. That's the same thing. They're, they're touching each other. That means multiply. I like how this is continuing to shrink down. 16 equals 1 fourth n. So basically what we need to do is divide 16 by 1 fourth to get n by itself. 16 divided by 1 fourth is one of those keep, change, flip problems in where we multiply. Um, when we're dividing fractions, we actually multiply by the reciprocal. So that's what they've done right here. 16 divided by 1 fourth is actually 16 over 1, because that's the same as this, times... 4 over 1, because that is the flip or the reciprocal of this. When we do that work, we find that um, our answer is 64. So in the end, 16 is 25% of the number 
64. And again, one last thing, if you're a diagram person, this is how you would write out your diagram. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. Um, I hope this video was helpful. Have a great day.